Welcome to Lesson 29, where I am going to walk you through two of the concepts we just did, arrays and objects, because sometimes you want to address your data, a lot of it at once, and it's complex data. So you can build a list using an array of objects, complex data types. You may have employees, you may have a list of books, you may have a list of devices, something that you want to pass in or pass out of a function, send to another system. So I used to just say, here, have the whole list all at once and God bless you, have fun with it. Let's, let's go down here to look at an example. So here is an example of an array. We have book list equals square bracket tells me immediately this is array. This is still written in that JavaScript object notation. So the format is kind of important. Inside of the array where I would normally have 135, if you think about the other one, or Chuck Stacy Craig, I have one object separated by a comma, then another object, note the curly braces. Don't get scared off by this. I'm trying to walk through slowly so we can all figure it out. And then three objects. So there are three objects in this array. Those objects are composed of a title and an author. And of course, we've got the double quotes to denote the property name, and then the obviously string values for the value of each property. I could have a release year, publisher, ISBN number, different information, but to keep it simple. Now, to add or access that, I, since I have an array called book list, I can obviously get the length very easily with book list length. How many books are in my library? And use that perhaps, whoop, scroll down a little too far, to get at one of the properties. So the notation for getting into the array, because the array has subscripts, the zeroth element is the first one, length is the Last one, this is going to say three. Do I have a book list sub three? I don't. What do you think will happen if I just take this and copy it in to my script's background? Okay, it is going to say <laughs> the last script that I had. Now, that was in the copy paste buffer. Let's try that again. There we are, books. And it says, here are, ah, the last author is undefined. You don't have a subscript three. What happened? Well, remember off by one, the array is going to go zero, one, two, and I said, go get me the third element, the actually the fourth element, the book list sub three. What I could do here is say, go get me the last element, which is length minus one. So try that again, copy, back up and paste. There's my book length minus one, run that, and it says, the last author was Charles Dickens. Now, put that in a loop so that I can get at each of those elements, and I will see that I can get each of them. Now, I do this out of an ease of convention to stop typing as much as I, it, I'm lazy. I type as little as possible. So I like to make a variable that addresses one of the array elements. This is an object in a list. That prevents me from having to type this every time. Book list sub i, book list sub i, book list sub i. Okay, I don't like to type that, but if I'm going to reuse that, I can burn up a variable, they're free, and say var book equals whatever which one I'm on, zero, one, two. Put that in a variable so I can address that object, and it makes it a little easier to understand this is one of the books in my book list. So if I put that in script's background, I now get my last author. Here's my loop going from I to less than length and run that script. And I now get, here's I, here's the title, here's the author, just like my GS info statement tells me to do. I, title, value, author, value. So I've got a nice output that I can do with that. Very powerful stuff when you start combining arrays and objects because now you can pass even more complex information into your array. Let me get that back into, into a function, into another system, and, and let it operate on that with a lot of data all at once. And then even theoretically, you could be passing that single object of in the array to another function, method, something and say, here, here's a book, go figure out what you want to do with it. And I'm just going to keep calling that. 
And now you've broken down a very complex process into nice atomic functions that either pass a list and then start operating in it, operate out a book. You decide how you want to structure that, what you want to pass in and out. But this allows you to get a lot of information moved very quickly between functions, between integration, between systems. Lots of lots of possibilities when you start looking at this, and it's not that difficult. The hardest part is really that notation. How do I address this when I've got an array of objects and the object may have an array in itself and that array may be an object and you start getting into uh, scenarios where you've got subscripts and dots and subscripts and dots. Consider using those smaller variables and say, take one element and let's tear it apart. Take another element out of that one and let's, let's address that individually. And it makes it easier to read, recognize, write, debug, maintain. <laughs> you use your own adjective in there. So that's putting objects and arrays together in a very useful format. Join me in the next video where I show you how you can convert that object to a string, even debug it easier than the var key in object method that I had before. So I will see you real soon.